Hey guys, Shane here, Ozflight Simmer. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are in X Plane 11.3 and we're going to walk through how to set up your flight controls using the new response curve that have been implemented in the latest updates. This feature hasn't been included in previous versions of X-Plane and to be honest, it's very overdue. Um, in my honest opinion, the uh, flight characteristics on the ground um, were very unforgiving and unrealistic uh, when it comes to X-Plane 11. So I'm very excited um, that this has been included and you don't need to use a third party add-on software to get set up. So the first controls we're going to take a look at is the rudder controls So we're going to hit add response curve. So here we can see our response curve. You've got the horizontal line which is basically the sim response and then the vertical response is actual the input you're putting on your controls. As you can see I'm moving my rudder uh, right to a left here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this, we're going to clear this and set it back to default. We're going to clear it there and we'll go back in and apply. And then we'll jump back in the sim and we'll show you how the aircraft handles uh, through the rudders uh, on its default position. So here we are in the default 172 in uh, X-Plane. This is what we're gonna use for the testing today. And I'm just gonna quickly move left and uh, right. So you can see it's quite twitchy, which is the default setup. And I find uh, when you're gaining a bit of speed or, or once after you've touched down with a bit of speed, uh, you're always gonna be uh, porpoising left to right. Um, and it's very unforgiving even in a crosswind uh, situation. As we gain some speed, and I'm trying to line up here. Um, you can see just even when on the center line, it's always going to be por uh, porpoising, uh, even when we're flying directly into the wind. So we'll jump back into the response curve uh, rudder controls, and what we'll do is, as you can see, I'm manipulating the line and I'm moving the response curve up to extreme um, amount of uh, input there. You can see how quickly the rudder pedals would work. Or the other way, you could move it all the way back to having the world's biggest uh, null zone. But um, what we'll do is we'll go the other way and we'll put it as a really unrealistic response. Now, the good thing is if you make a mistake when you're setting it up, you can always go back to uh, default. So this time around, I'm gonna manipulate the controls or the rudders in the same way. And as you can see, there's a lot more import into the sim um, and they're very, very, very twitchy. As I try to increase speed, it's really, really unrealistic um, and very, very hard uh, to control. So we'll jump back into the settings um, and I'll change it to a, what I find that works for me. You can also do this manually and enter it in uh, the numerical value as well. Um, and it just takes some time to find out what works uh, for you. But when you're changing this, you're changing this for every aircraft uh, in the sim. I do highly recommend spending the time doing this. Uh, it doesn't matter what controls you're using in the simulator. If you spend the time, it will be, in my opinion, a much more rewarding uh, flight experience. So we're back in the cockpit. These are the uh, settings that I prefer to use. It's basically just taming down um, the, the default one there, and I've got a bit of a null zone going. So the aircraft at uh, high speed is quite easy to handle, and also um, still has a lot of control. As you can see, I'm moving around quite a bit, but also I can hold it in a uh, straight line. You can follow the same for all the other flight controls. Uh, one of the other ones I think is really important to change is the actual pitch. Um, so we'll take a quick look at that as well. We are using the uh, SciTech yoke today. And as you can see, when I'm pitching uh, forward and back, it's quite a quick sort of response time. So we want to um, tame that down and I'll just input in uh, my own settings as well. And what I'm trying to achieve here is um, on the initial pullback, you don't have that um, jerkiness um, when you're taking off. So there we go, we've inputted the settings there. We'll hit apply. And we'll jump back into the 172. So the settings are basically tamed down for the rudder and also for the yoke. So we're going to go down to runway 7 here. And what I'm looking for is a nice smooth uh, transition uh, down the runway and uh, rotate as we can hold the center line here. So as you can see, I can move around, but when I want to keep it straight, I can keep it straight too. And 
there we go. A nice uh, pullback on the yoke and a straight into the air. Very smooth. As I mentioned earlier before, I highly recommend spending the time uh, setting up the response curves and the controls to the way that you like to fly. It will add to the immersion and give you a more great experience when it comes to flying in X-Plane 11.3. I hope this video was informative and if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more content uh, weekly on the Ausflight Sim channel, please hit that subscribe button and we will see you on the next video. Have a good day. Cheers. Goodbye.